Hello everyone, I'm Handy Bee with Handy Bee Creations and today's project is going to be recycling, revamping, redoing, anything with an R-E in front of it. That's what we're going to be doing to these shoes. Yeah. Most people would probably just toss them out. You know, I almost did too, but the reason that I'm not is because even though these shoes are about five years old, I still really love them. Look at the buckle. The, anyway, the straps here are leather. So they're very durable. The only thing that's really, I mean, aside from the leather being all faded, which actually originally these were like a greenish gold color and I really didn't like the green gold so I took a sharpie pen and I just went over these with the sharpie pen and even though the black is really faded the sharpie pen actually did a much better job it was really really black for a while but I haven't worn them so I decided well on the bottoms I mean look at the the bottom is still in really good shape too I actually got a lot of wear out of these already. So I decided, you know what, why throw them away? I'm an artist. Um, I love to paint. I love to recycle, uh, reuse, and uh, do all kinds of fun things. So I thought I would just make a video. Okay, so I picked out the things that I think that we're going to need to get started on this. And basically, whatever's loose and coming up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repair. And then what I want to do is replace this fabric with my own fabric. There is a little bit of a difference. This is a little stronger and it feels it feels thicker than than what I have here. So we're going to need fabric. We're going to need glue, which I thought I would use the Craft Bond Tacky Glue or any kind of shoe glue, cement. Mod Podge or uh, I mean you can just try anything to, to keep it down as you can see a Professional made these okay, and so it came up I have a funny feeling that it's gonna come up again even after I revamp them It will be a while. Hopefully I recommend an old paintbrush that you don't care about and a fairly decent doesn't have to be too expensive to apply the um, acrylic paint that we're going to use. I'm going to use this shiny craft paint. And then I'm also going to mix it with the professional Liquitex brand Heavy Body. So I'm going to just put the two together and I'm actually going to make a wash out of this. And I'll show you how to do that. You're going to also need steel wool. And also one of my favorite products to use always with all, all my paint projects mostly is alcohol. So make sure you have some alcohol. What I have here is just a cotton t-shirt over a like chess game board. And I'm just going to use that as my ironing board So the board first right thing now. you're going to want to make sure you do is press out your fabric. Also, you're going to want to have a piece of chalk, white chalk, to mark your fabric before you cut it. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the top layer only. So this is going to have to be cut out. That is going to be just a little bit of a challenge as far as I'm just going to use this as a template to outline my new material. Do both so we have the right and the left. And I'm just going to go ahead and take my tacky glue. So, as you can see, I'm just applying a little bit of glue to the area that's come up, and then I'm just smoothing it down with my brush. Even it out underneath.
we're going to let those dry over okay, there. The next thing is we're going to lay out the fabric and then take the insole and lay it on top of the fabric that we're going to use. Then I have a piece of chalk or you can use a charcoal light pencil or any fabric marker will work. This part of the fabric. I'm going to lay this down and then just trace around. This is the right foot, the right shoe. So there's one. Okay, I'll set that aside and take the left. I'll have to iron it. I'll iron that out. You want to make sure you're placing your template on top of the fabric on the right side, up, not on the, uh, you know, the side that you're gonna that you're gonna use. Make sure you do that. Okay. Outline. Next, I'm going to just go ahead and cut my fabric, following the lines. The next thing I want to do is glue my new pieces onto the originals. That maybe this original fabric will stick better to what's already what was already there. So I'm gonna get my old brush out again. Go ahead and glob the glue down. Get your brush and smooth it. Even it out. Very carefully. 
in and smooth it out really carefully. Sorry if I'm out of frame here. I keep trying to get it. All right, that one's good. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to let it dry. Okay. Uh, do the other one. Again, plop down the glue. This is just Elmer's tacky glue. This one's got quite a bit of overlay as far as cut the material that I cut, so I'll have to trim that down a little bit, which is not going to be a big problem. Now, as you can see, I'm avoiding getting any glue on this side for the time being. I just want to make sure that it's on the top side for the fabric. You want to smooth your fabric onto that original. And it kind of stretches a little bit, which is nice. Make sure it's all flat, no air bubbles. Nice and flat. All right, I'm going to set my two insoles um, aside to dry. And in the meantime, we're going to work on the rest of the shoe. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to prep for painting. And the way to do that, you're going to grab a piece of still wool. peels apart, so just grab just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to use the steel wool on the leather. Doesn't matter which way you go or anything. I'm just prepping the leather, basically. Steel wool to prepare it for paint adhesion. Okay. And we'll make sure you get every area that you plan to paint. Paint sticks pretty well to leather, even without still wool, but it's just good to prep it first. If you have buckles like I do here, avoid steel wool on them so that you don't scratch it. If your leather has color on it, you basically just want to still wool it until you see it dull out or until you get some of the color, the original color off. And you'll be able to tell. You'll see the difference when you start doing it. And that's basically all you're looking for is, you know, get off that top layer 
of whatever is there. kind of see the difference that this is shiny and this is more dulled out even though it's still you can still kind of see shine but it's a dull it's really dull Then I'm just going to brush this off. Okay, the next step, let's get an old rag. Get your um, rubbing alcohol. Dab the rubbing alcohol onto your clean rag. And then just wipe over the leather with the alcohol to clean it and also to remove debris or oils. It just alcohol is a great cleaner and stripper of many more still wool here. Basically what this is doing is helping the leather to become more porous so that when you apply the paint it will just absorb right into the leather. With this process you'll be long lasting. Get a nice plastic container to mix your paint. You're going to want to use clean water, spring water if you have it, to make your wash. I'm, I'm mixing it because I want the shine from this product. It's very, very shiny. I don't know if you can see that. But I just want to mix the quality in, quality paint in here as well. So just a little dab will do, not much. So I've got my paint about, you know, just covering the bottom. See? And then I'm just going to pour a little bit of water in there. About the same amount of water. Equal parts. Mix the paint with the water to make a wash. And mix it nice and thorough. I'm just going to take a little bit of this glue masking tape Oops. cover the buckle Now, you're making this wash 
so that um, you don't have a big thick layer of color on your first coat. So just go ahead and smooth the paint right over the leather. Use even strokes as best you can. Um, just the first layer is going to be really thin. Don't worry about the coverage. Don't worry about any streaking or anything like that. Just make sure it's as even as possible for your first layer. Let it sit there. Set it aside, let it dry. Try to avoid, when you do apply it also, try to avoid running in any way. You'll see when you get to it, it's not too complicated. The color sort of just absorbs right in. We're going to let those dry and we shall be back. So I'm back. It's been about an hour here now. So what I want to do now is apply another coat. And also, before I go any further with this experiment, I also want to say that I plan to use this Rust-Oleum brand clear lacquer. And I want to spray this clear lacquer, or I'm going to spray this clear lacquer, over the top of my freshly painted leather, black leather, because I want to try to see if I can accomplish like a patent leather look. And I don't know if I'm going to accomplish that, but I figured using the lacquer, it would probably be the closest that I could ever do. So I love this shiny black look. I love patent leather look. I love... I love that. So we're going to give this a try and, you know, if I should, if it should fail, if it doesn't stick, it's all a gamble. It's all an experiment. However, if that becomes the case, I will just get out my handy dandy steel wool and start all over again. I have a feeling that I'm not, that's not going to happen. Uh, so anyway, let's get another coat on there. As you can see, it dried pretty nicely. There are a few strokes, paint strokes in there. Goal is to continue to do this until we don't have any paint strokes on there. Also, I, I put my wash in this little plastic container. I actually got these from the dollar store, which are really nice. They they're baby food containers, and they come in a pack of two for a dollar. They make really nice wash cans. So when you make your acrylic wash, you can then just store it in this little container, and it doesn't come out. And uh, not bad for 50 cents, huh? 
A lot of good deals at the dollar store, especially for artists. So here we go. Dip and brush. This will be the second coat now. go ahead and um, just give a little dab on the edges as well, the edge of the leather. Didn't do last time. And you can't really see it through the edge anyway, so. This is a lot of fun, guys, so get out your leather shoes, leather faded sandals, or pumps or whatever and before you toss them see if they're worth salvaging Make sure I get really good around this in this area because when I take off this tape, it is going to reveal all the little spots underneath from where the buckle is. Of course, that won't be too big of a deal. I can always get in there with uh, my handy dandy Sharpie pen. that becomes the case. All right. We're going to let each we're going to do this as many times as necessary until the uh, color until it looks right actually. So, I'll let this sit for an hour and be back. Okay, we're back again and now I just want to show you how good it, it's starting to look. The color I don't see any streaks, so I'm going to just keep um, going with this. And, and then once I'm satisfied, I'll come back. At that point, I'm going to let them dry. I am going to then spray a coat or two of the lacquer. Then I'm not going to video this. I'll come back. I'll show you the end result, and then we'll glue in the insoles. That will be the last step. And then, of course, the finished product, which is going to be really exciting. Okay, okay. So, I shall be back with the final, the finale. See you soon. Okay, I am back now. I have sprayed these with the lacquer spray paint. They are completely dry, even though they are also very very shiny and so this is the closest the absolute closest that we're gonna get to black patent leather using acrylic paint and the lacquer clear now um, you might wonder why I didn't just spray the whole thing black lacquer, but that's because I wanted to go through the steps and the process of having more control over the paint. Now I will show you the next step I plan to do will be to glue in the soles. Go ahead and remove this tape. Oh, 
beautiful. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I want to give it more drying time. Even though they've been drying. It only takes um, 30 minutes to dry the lacquer uh, clear coat. Oh, but I just think they came out really good, don't you? I mean, that's not bad at all. So now, the next step is to glow, glue our soles in. This one has a little bit of overlap, so I'm just going to cut that off. If you can see it there. Right there. Right along there, so I'm going to cut that. That's nice. Okay. Let's wipe out this inner area with cloth to get any debris out that might be lingering in there. That will prevent our glue from sticking. So before we glue them in, I'm just going to go ahead and where I had cut the slice earlier to get them off, I'm just going to cut a thin slice. And then, right where that little hole is from before, I'm going to cut that out carefully. just going to slip this in just to make sure that it's going to fit nicely in there. Okay, so it looks like it fits. I'm just going to now glue it in. Oh, it's cute. Now we're going to take our glue carefully Take your old brush and smooth out your paint, or excuse me, glue. Try to spread it as evenly as possible. Make sure you get the whole bottom covered. Fold this in nice and easy. Bring this down. And just begin molding it to the inside of the shoe. Using your fingers to 
carefully spread it out, pressing all the air bubbles out with your fingers. Let the glue seep out and then also just use it to smooth it out over the fabric, over the edge, so that you can get those um, frayed edges, keep them from fraying any further. Keep some alcohol on hand. When you get the alcohol or when you get the glue on your hands, you can take it off with the rubbing alcohol. So this is nice, nice and smoothed out now. And then this is just gonna have to dry. And I think for best results, probably overnight before you just before they're actually worn. Okay, let's do the other one now. As far as the glue, you just want to make sure it, it covers the bottom. Again, you're using an old paintbrush, not one that you would normally use to paint with anymore. You don't want to take a chance ruining a good brush, so just make sure that it's a brush that you don't care about anymore. Make sure you get every inch of the sole covered with glue. it in, smooth it out. You can feel how easily this this works too. It just kind of molds right back into place where it was before. The glue that I have here dries clear. So no worries on that. Just keep pressing and pushing and molding. All the air bubbles out. You can feel it. The final step. Just going to use the brush to smooth it. Same 
one for the other side. Now I'm not putting alcohol on it. I'm just cleaning the brush, cleaning the glue off of the brush and then just using the brush to smooth out those little bumps. Just kind of it's working great by the way. It's just working great. And then also these can also be sprayed again, so you can um, spray them. If they dull out, you can just give it a fresh coat of paint. Got a little bit of paint on the on the sole there, so I'm going to use my brush. Douse it in alcohol. And this time I'm not going to take the alcohol off. I'm just going to slightly brush and scrub right there. And then just use my rag to wipe it off. I'll just do it very gently and very carefully not to get it near you. Alcohol is a wonderful tool to have if you're an, a, a painter because you can use it to clean your brushes, to clean off paint on areas that you don't want the paint to be. Okay, I thought it would be fun just for the sake of this whole in experimentation that I just did, creating uh, a black patent leather look with paint, with acrylic paint. Now I want to show you the difference between what I just did and a real black or patent leather shoe, which is this old shoe. So this is real uh, patent leather, and this is the one I just did. So I think it's pretty close. I think I actually accomplished something today with this experiment, something that I didn't think um, could be done until I, until I figured out a way to do it. So I look forward to doing more videos. And hey, if you guys have any requests at all or any questions, Please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section or shoot me an email and ask me questions or even, um, yeah, you know, make a suggestion for a video uh, or ask me something, you know, some random thing that you might want to know how to do and maybe I could figure out how to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Hanny B with Hanny B Creations. Thanks so much for watching. Mm-hmm.